Good evening and welcome back to HeartMinistryRadio.com. Thank you again for joining us, joining me here. I am Brenda Dyrich, your host, and this is the Doors to Your Heart. We are continuing our series on dancing in the desert. Um, it's really interesting that when we go around and, and talking about dancing in the desert, and you know, people start start to you know wrap their minds around what that even means. You know, it's really exciting because again, God gave it to us when women were talking about um, you know the dry places that they had gone to, and you know where they were, and a lot of them, a lot of them were despondent. And God gave the word, you know, the the dry places are necessary and that we had to change our perspective as it related to our desert experiences. And he said, dance, dance in the desert. So through this whole process, I'm learning <laughs> what he meant by that. Um, prayerfully, you are learning what he means by dancing in the desert and that you are dancing, you know, whatever that means to you. Um, if that means that you are developing better eating habits, that you are even de developing better sleeping habits. You know, sleep is so important, you know, and a lot of us are just sleep depraved. I'm one of them, <laughs> which I'm working through that one, you know, that you are putting your mind on the Lord where it should be while you're going through these desert times or while you're, again, you're exercising, you are um, going through spiritual disciplines that maybe you would not have had you been in a better place in your mind, you know, so whatever that dance means to you, you know, we want you to dance. And tonight we're going to continue um, part three of what to wear in the desert. You know, we talked about um, what to wear. The first one was the belt of truth, right? And then the garment of praise or the spirit of heaviness. You know, our, con our controlling scripture is still Ephesians 6, 11 through 18, and um, I'm just going to read that, and it's from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And it's put on your whole armor of God, that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the evil day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled about your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is powerful, right? I love, 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 love this verse of Scripture. So again, we talked about what to wear in the desert. That's where we are. This is a series that we're continuing within the um, Dancing in the Desert um, sessions. So we talked about the belt, the belt of truth, stating that we had to believe that the word of God was true, not in full, but in part, right? And then we talked about the breastplate of righteousness and how that had, had to be held securely in place with the belt of truth. We also talked about the garment of praise for the, for the specific spirit of heaviness, right? So if you haven't heard those uh, two lessons, go to the heartministryradio.com and go to the um, HMN TV tab and you can see all of the various lessons that we've taught, you know, through that. So it's always TV on demand or audio on demand. You can always go back and hear or listen to something that you may have missed. Okay. So uh, today we're talking about another piece of armor or something you should wear and we're talking about your feet you know being fitted with the gospel of peace and in Matthew it, it reads watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many you will hear wars and rumors of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed such things must happen but the end is still to come Nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And we know 
All of this is happening, right? And then it said, for there shall rise up false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. We have to know our foundational truths, right? We talked about that earlier. So you have to know that you know, that you know, <laughs> that the word of God is true and that these doctrines that are going to be coming, they are going to sound good. And the people who are going to pro be proclaiming those gospels will be eloquent, you know, and if they sound that good, it must be true, <laughs> right? These are the thinking, but we have to make sure that those doctrines, that we are rejecting them if they don't line up with the word of God. So that's why we have to know that we know that we know. And one of the things years ago that we were doing in banking and they trained us in fraud. And one of the things we were to do is just what? Hold on to a dollar bill and or whatever currency they gave us and to study that particular dollar bill or whatever. So we knew the nooks and crannies. We, we know how it felt, you know, with the intaglio engraving and we, you know, when they started with the watermarks and all of that. And we, if you study the authentic, right, um, dollar bill, then when a counterfeit came, you would be able to recognize it automatically, right? So if we study the word of God and believe that everything God says is true, so when these doctrines come, right, we immediately dismiss it because we know it doesn't line up with the word of God. You see what I'm saying? So we have to know. And the only way we get to know the word of God is by, by studying it. We have to eat it, right? Um, in Psalm 37, and we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, um, taste and see, 37, 4, taste and see that the Lord is good. We have to know that we know our relationship with our Father. Again, because these things are going to come and just know they're coming. So gird yourself up. You know, when you are in a desert experience, and that's what, that's the whole premise of this dancing in the desert, when you're in a desert experience, there are voices that are coming to your head. Because what? You don't want to be in a dry place, first of all. <laughs> you know, you're probably upset about that. You know, you wish that your life was in a different place by now, right? But God has put you in this place because he wants to grow you up in many ways. He wants to fine tune you. He wants the best out of your life. So he's not going to move you out of this place until you have done just that. So can, so surrender <laughs> to the experience. Get to know God in the fellowship of his suffering, which is very difficult to do. But that's when we really get to know him on a deeper level, right? So again, we're in dancing in the desert. Think about what your dance is. And we all have to go through these trying times. So think about what you do in the desert experiences that makes it bearable for you right? What do you do? You know, again, do you exercise? Do you fast? Do you pray? Do you, do you, you know, um, ignite old relationships, you know, with men or women, prayerfully women with women, <laughs> men with men, because what? You're very vulnerable during this time. So as a woman, you don't want to reconnect with maybe a single man <laughs> in this time, but women, you want to connect with other women who have like precious faith, women that can lift you up in the Lord. And men, you want to connect with other men of like precious faith that can look, that can lift you up. So what? Iron sharpened iron, right? So look for those people who are on fire for the Lord, who are doing right, you know, by the Lord, so you can gain strength with them. But look for people who are doing those things. Don't go through this portion of time by yourself. Because what happens, Satan wants to isolate you. And just like a bully, you know, bullying is really um, prevalent in our day. And what a bully does is tries to get you in the corner, right, by yourself and begins to wail on you, right? Tells you everything that you've done wrong and tells you that you're no good and you'll never amount to anything, right? So you're in this corner feeling like, I guess I don't amount to anything. I guess I'm not anything, you know, because you have allowed that to enter your space. Um, I was just thinking the other day, and you know how, again, this is the holiday time, and, you know, it, it could be very difficult depending on where you are in your life. And um, just thinking about people who are going through and all of that. And then something that had happened to me years ago came up in my mind. And I began to feel down about that. I mean, this thing has come and gone. But I began to feel down about that. And then I heard in my spirit, 
you have a choice. You have a choice to think about this thing and let it, you know, get in your spirit again and allow you to become depressed and, you know, and downtrodden. Or you can think about me and you can rejoice in me and you can think about all those things that are good and pure and true. That's where I had a choice. I could decide what to continue to let me go down that path that I, you know, that was very difficult years ago or turn the path around and go on the Lord's side. Think about what God has done for me. Think about the good things that are in my life. I chose life. I'm so grateful. I was just praising the Lord. I was so grateful that I was conscious about the choices that I could make. And we can do that too. We have a choice. There's always a choice. You know, you can think about those things. You can be so angry that you're in the desert experience. You are in a dry place. Your life doesn't appear to be moving anywhere, right? You can wallow in that thing or you can choose life where God, you promised the hope in the future. You promised me that. I know that I'm in this place for your reasons. Help me to learn those lessons that I need to so I can go forward in you. You know, talk to him about it. Don't allow that Satan. Don't allow Satan to get you in that corner and begin to wail on you because he will. He absolutely will. But we have a choice. We can win the battle of our mind just by shifting right? Shifting into what God has told us to do. So I was so grateful for that illumination in my mind that I could share with you tonight. Amen. So again, there are going to be false Christ, false prophets, and they're going to be able to display great signs and wonders in so much, if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect, right? So I know that you're elect, so we don't want to be deceived, right? And we talked about the breastplate of righteousness and how it protected our vital organs. And we talked about the belt of truth again that held the breastplate tightly in place so that we could withstand the fiery darts of the devil. And one of the things that I, I was, um, rem I remembered actually about the Roman army and the things that they did with the shield. You know, when, when Satan is throwing the arrows or when the enemies was, the enemy was shooting arrows, they would take their shield and dip it in water so it would deflect those fiery darts, right? And then with the breastplate of righteousness, we had to make sure that there are no chinks, there are no slits, those, there's nothing in our in our breastplate that would allow an arrow to come through. We talked about um, King Ahab last week, who that's the way he died because he had a slit in his breastplate, right? He disguised himself so the, so the opposing army wouldn't know that he was the king because their orders were to go against the king and nobody else. So he disguised himself. So they didn't know he was king. But an unknown soldier, it doesn't even give the name of the soldier, fired an arrow at a man. He didn't know who it was. It was the king, Ahab. And it pierced his armor because he had a, a chink. He had a slither in his armor, his breastplate. That arrow penetra penetrated and the king died that evening. Right? So we don't want to have, want to have any, any chinks, any slits in our breastplate that's covering our heart, the innermost part of us, right? Because one of the arrows that Satan uses in that part is condemnation, right? You are no good. You will never be any good. I don't even know why, you know, you think God chose you for anything. You know, you did this thing even last week. How do you think God is going to use you in any capacity? You know, these are the things that Satan says. But we know that in Romans 1, that there is no condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus, right? If we've confessed our sins and forsaken them, God has forgotten them. So there is no condemnation, right? So keep that breastplate tightly in place with the belt of truth, right? So we went, we went, on, um, about, oh, we went on with that last week. So we have the breastplate and now we're going to talk about what we should wear on our feet. And it was so funny. We were talking even yesterday about um, dancing in the desert. And someone said, what's hot? How are we going to be dancing, you know, in the desert? <laughs> you know, what does that mean? How are we going to be dancing in the desert? And it's so hot, you know. And I thought this was so apropos um, using this particular armor, right? So we're going to talk about our shoes and what to wear. And again, in Ephesians, we talked about that. So we want to know the purpose of our shoes, and how the shoes serve us spiritually as we're walking, certainly, um, in the desert. So we want to go. We want to go to Acts chapter twenty and verse twenty-three, 
and I, I won't be before you long. I just want to uh, touch on a few points. And the brethren gathered around, gathered around that desperately trying to convince Paul to abandon his plans to travel to Jerusalem. They had heard the, the prophecies about the fate that was awaiting Paul, right? And Paul himself said that he did not know what to expect, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations awaited him. So Paul knew exactly what was going to happen, right? And again, this is in Acts 20, 23. If you have an, an opportunity, please um, read that. And Paul's brethren and fellow workers couldn't bear. They could not bear the thought that their friend was willingly walking into this kind of situation, and they begged him to reconsider. But it reads, But God, through his Holy Spirit, had summoned Paul to Jerusalem, and Paul was intent on answering the call, knowing that the upcoming trip could very well mean the end of his life. He says to them, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am not ready only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord, of Lord Jesus. And this is something too came to mind. When you are going through a tough time and you are, you're absolutely sure that, you know, God has put you in this place so he can prune you, so he can, you know, burn off some things and crack and break. And, you know, all those things that happen during the pruning process don't, they hurt terribly, but this is not a punishment, right? So when people are looking at you as you're going through trials, it may appear to them that you're being punished, Right. So again, you have to know um, that, you know, that, you know, <laughs> that God is putting you in this place. And although your friends may say, you know, seriously, do you think, you know, this is God that is doing this? Maybe, you know, there's some sin in your life. Maybe you are going down a course that you're not supposed to go because, you know, going in this place, you're going to be hurt. And I understand that because I, you know, when you watch your brother and sister and you see them going through things, sometimes you, you know, you ask, are you sure this is God? Are you sure? You have to be sure this is God that's taking you through that. And you just simply let them know, yes, this is God and he's going to take me through. And I need you to pray for me as I go through this time, right? So just because you see a brother and sister going through a hard time does not mean that they're being punished. It could mean that God is pruning them and he's taking them through a, a different place, a different level. They just need us. We need you to pray for us. You know, that's why prayer is so important one for another, right? Because we are going through and we have gone through some really dark times, right? But if God has taken you through a tough time, then, and you know it's God, then you are to share with your friends, your family, and all this. I'm going through this. I know God is going to take me through. I need you to pray my strength. You know, don't, you know, don't keep asking me, is this God? Are you sure? You know, if I, if I am sure about this, just pray for me. And if you are sure about that, I will pray for you and pray a covering of protection, a hedge of protection around you as you are going through that that time and please pray a hedge of protection around me while I'm going through right because so you can see how watching someone suffer breaks your heart it definitely breaks your heart but just because in your eyes they're suffering does not mean that they are in sin it may mean that God is taking them through a desert experience and that they, they need you to pray they need your prayerful support over that and they need you to watch them as they're going through so if again if they have a bad day or have a bad week, <laughs> you know, that you were there in support. You were praying for them. If they're on a ball somewhere and can't get out of bed, you're going over there and helping them out of bed and helping them to do those things that you know they have to do in order to move forward. So we have to be our brother and sister's keeper. We have to be praying for one another. We have to be watching, right? We have to be watching as well as praying. So I just needed to interject. I thought that was really interesting because it happens to us, right? But again, but Paul said, I must go. I must go. And he, Paul didn't just wear or write about the armor of God. He, he had to wear it and he had to live this thing, right? And at this time in his life, he was able to call upon the shoes, right? Of the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's our, that's our, um, 
our article today that we're talking about, what to wear. He found protection and strength in knowing the knowledge of what God's gospel meant, right? And what it meant for others as he was to share the good news with them. His footing was sure. His footing was unshakable. And we have to be prepared to carry the gospel of peace just as he did, right? Now, shod with the gospel of peace or fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That is just an interesting way to talk about shoes, <laughs> right? And shoes like the belt, they may initially seem unnecessary. You know, what difference does it make if I'm wearing shoes or if I'm wearing a belt? We found out that the belt of truth was so important because if that wasn't tightly in, pl in place, then you were succumbing to every wind of doctrine. You know, you had to know that the belt, you know, that the word of God was true. And the full counsel of the word was true, right? And then we talk about the spiritual shoes um, and how we wear them and why we need them to be equipped before we get, go out into the battlefield. And again, it's not, this is very important. <laughs> Although it's shoes, it's very important. And, you know, basically what purpose did the shoes serve, right? And just imagine uh a full an, an army or a soldier, you know, have his shield, he has his helmet, he has his breastplate, he has his belt, um, but he doesn't have any feet or any shoes on his feet. So he's walking around fully clothed, but nothing on his feet. That really doesn't make sense in that picture, if you look at that picture, right? And it may seem strange, but think about it. Some of us are walking around and we don't have all of our armor on. Right. And the problem goes beyond just looking odd. <laughs> right. But a shoeless soldier could run into real trouble as it relates to the heat of battle. Right. Unless he's fighting on, let's just say, you know, just soft grass or asphalt, you know, he'll be OK. But most battles, there's debris everywhere. You know, there are, there are twigs, there's glass, there's pebbles and all of that. And a, a bare foot would succumb very, very um, soon, right, to some of those things. So it was very important that we wear the right shoes in battle. Not that you have your feet, your shoes on, but they are the right kind of shoe, right? So in short, shoes allow us to step freely without fear while we turn our full attention to the battle at hand. You know, if I'm fighting against something, the last thing I need to be thinking about is if I'm going to step on something. That's a distraction, isn't it? Right? So we have to make sure even something as simple, we think, as shoes are properly fitted and that we're wearing the right shoes. Right? So in the desert, you know, if you think um, about a desert, being in the desert in the heat of the day with nothing on your feet. Can you imagine what that feels like? Have you ever walked the sands and it's hot outside? You know, you didn't have any any flippers or any water shoes. You didn't have anything on your feet. You were popping all over because it was like, ouch, that hurts, right? So imagine being in a place where you're in battle and you're trying to fight an enemy and your feet are hurting. You know, they're even bleeding at this point, depending, depending on what's going on. So those things that we think are, in, are unimportant are very as it relates to the whole picture, right? So what is the gospel of peace? Right, and there are different gospels in the Bible we know. And Matthew, this is a Matthew four twenty three. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. And then we have in Acts twenty twenty four. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I, though I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus to testify through the gospel of the grace of God. Praise the Lord. And how should we preach unless we're sent? This is Romans 10, 15. Again, we're firing a few verses at you tonight. Prayerfully, you're able to write them down and read them later on. And again, Romans 10, 15. How shall we preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring good tidings of good things, the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of grace, the gospel of peace. 
And these are some of the descriptions attached to the word gospel throughout the New Testament, right? And do all these different qualifications mean that there are multiple gospels, you know, set forth in the Bible? No. The Greek word translated gospel simply means good news, right? And this raises a question, the good news of what? The first description used in the gospel was sum summarizing all of the others. The gospel of the kingdom, right? The good news of the kingdom of God includes the good news about Jesus Christ, his grace, right? His plan for our salvation of, of mankind. And this plan gives us peace now and will bring peace to the world, right? This is the message God's people are eager to share with others. Our loving Heavenly Father preparing us for the future beyond imagination and description, right? So we are, try we are to tell the world who Jesus is and give them an opportunity to accept him as Lord and Savior of their life. That's what we have to be do. We have to do. Our feet have to be prepared to preach that gospel. Amen. So what does the gospel have to do with shoes? <laughs> You know, here we go again. What does it have to do with shoes? So again, we have Romans 10, 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him and who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not what? Heard. And how shall they hear without a what? A preacher. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. As believers, we are sent what, to announce the good news of God's kingdom. Even in the desert experiences, we are not given a pass when we are going through hard times that we don't share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't get a pass. You know, I'm in a bad place right now. You know, my finances are really, really bad. You know, I may not be feeling well in my body. I may be going through hard times on my job, hard time, difficult times in my marriage. You know, my life is just falling apart. You know, we are still required to give the good news. We're still required to share the gospel. You know, we don't get a pass just because we are in a desert experience. So this is an experience that is supposed to build us up, right? It's supposed to tear some things down that are not like God. But if we allow the process to work the way God intends it to, to, attends it to then we're going to be growing in the knowledge of him. And we're, we're going to be able to talk more about him and talk on a deeper level because we know him on a deeper level. So although we're going through a desert time, a dry experience, we have to change our perspective, right? We have to change our perspective as it relates to our desert experiences. Right. If God put us in this dry place or this experience, we have to embrace it. God, what, are, what do you want me to learn in this? How can I grow in this instead of crying and complaining about why me? Because that's our first thing. Why me? You know, I've been doing right according to what I know, God, you know, again, fasting and praying and, and you know, um, I'm even going in the van and picking up people or get, you know, getting people to church and I'm feeding the homeless and I'm doing all these things for you, God. Why, why am I in this horrible place right now? He said, if it's a pruning pro you know, process that he's not punishing you. He's not. Although it may hurt you very deeply, that pruning process is not punishment. And we have to look at it as God, okay, <laughs> this is what you need to do to take me to where you need me to go. Help me, God. Give me the strength to endure this, God. Give me the, the wisdom, your wisdom to know what I need to do. Help me, God, from day to day to get through this so I'm learning you. I am passing the test that you are placing on me right now so I can move forward and be what? Better or have the best of me. He doesn't want just the better. He wants the best. So God help me. <laughs> God help me in this dry time, in this difficult time to even spread the gospel that comes from the readiness, right? So our feet are prepared 
even in the desert, we are wearing those shoes that we need, that our feet aren't burning, and that they're not wearing out, right? So we still are required to preach the gospel of peace to all that we know. We don't get a pass. We don't get a pass, right? So again, um, the Apostle Paul's day, he, you know, he, he had to actually cover miles and miles. You know, he couldn't just get in his car and go to the next city. He had to walk many times, you know, so his feet had to be um, prepared. He had to have the right shoes on his feet, right? Again, transportation and communication has changed, but we must be consistently ready to do our part as it relates to spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Do you agree with that tonight? I know it's a hard, this is a hard thing to teach. Just let, I just want to let you know, <laughs> it's a difficult thing to preach be, and teach because teaching someone or talking to someone about hard times and that you're not, you know, you can't just lie down in the hard times that you have to get up and do those things you're required to do and, and preach and teach and, you know, and look your best and you know, all these things you're required to do in a hard time. You know, this is difficult for me to tell you <laughs> because it's difficult to do. But we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we know that if God is putting us in the desert experience, if he's putting us in a dry place or we're going through a trial and we know that we're doing right as it relates to his word, then he is saying, you know what? You're doing a good job. You are doing a good job. So I have to take you through this pruning process so what? I can get the best of you so you can bear more fruit. So he's saying, you're not, you're, I'm not punishing you. You're doing great. You're doing a great job. So let me take you through this dry time so I can break, I can scrape, I can pull. <laughs> you know, I can do all those things that I need to do to get the best out of you. But I will never take my eyes off of you. I will still provide for you. I will still give you peace. Even in the midst of these dry experiences. So that's why he said to dance. And I think he, again, he said that to me because I could understand it because I love to dance. <laughs> so I could understand what dancing in the desert would be. Right? And it's, again, it's what your discipline is when you are going through hard times. What is your discipline? Get your rhythm. You know, I'm getting up early. You know, I'm staying up late. I am, you know, the first thing I'm doing when I open my eyes is praising God. You know, I'm thinking about those things that are true and good, of good report. I'm filling my mind with goodness, right? I'm eating good food. I'm exercising. I'm grabbing someone with me because there's always going to be somebody in the desert with you, right? He said, grab a hand and start the dancing. Develop relationships with men and women that you would not have normally Right. We talked to a young lady the other day and she was in a homeless experience and she had to truly admit that she would not probably have engaged those people in that experience had she not been there. You know, who wants to go through that kind of experience? But it's not our choice, <laughs> the place where God takes us, you know, but we have to know that he's with us. Even in the tough times, God is with us. He promised never to leave us. Or forsake us. So don't fight so much. You know, don't kick and scream so much because you don't like your the situation that you're in. If this is God, if God has put you there, then relax, <laughs> praise a minute, ask him, what do I need to do, God? How do I need to get through this in a way that's pleasing to you? Right? So he will tell you specifically what you need to do. And he will uncover some things that are within you. That's the bad part for me. <laughs> He's always uncovering something that I just didn't, didn't want to see about myself. He didn't. I didn't want to see it, but he's uncovered it. And once it's in, once it's there, I have to recognize it, and then I have to give it to him. I have to give it to him so he can make it right within me. So all all kind of craziness is exposed in that desert experience. But the thing about God is he allows you to, or that exposure to happen in private. You know, he doesn't expose all your dirt. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> he does not. You know, he allows you to see those things that, that, are, aren't, that are not like him and to be able to work on those things. So I, I praise God because if he showed it to a man, 
you know, to a woman, if you show the, the ugliness that's in you, nobody would want to have anything to do with you, right? Because of those things that are in us. They're in us because of this. We, we, we live this body of flesh, but he allows those things to be exposed. And then he, in, a, in a private place where you can flesh it out, where you can kick and scream it out, <laughs> you know, so I bless God for the security and even the privacy that he gives us to work those things through. Right. So, again, for, uh, Romans three, I keep going back, but <laughs> I had to share those things. OK, so Romans three seventeen states and the way peace, just the way peace has been known. Right. Read Romans um, three seventeen. It talks about peace. And in spite of all human attempts at peace, it's clear from the world news report that but this world there's not much peace in this world right and then first john 2 6 and who says and abides in him ought himself also to walk as he walked so if we say if we say we're in jesus we have to walk the way he walked and even in that place of suffering you know that's how we sometimes again we get to know him best in this in the fellowship of his suffering that's one of the things that we try to overlook or try to get past, but that's one of the ways we have to get to know him, right? And following Christ's steps is a real way of peace. I tell you, after it's said and done, it's a way of peace. And John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be what? Afraid. Praise the Lord. That's real peace. That's God's peace. Okay, so back to the shoes. <laughs> back to the shoes. I promise I'm almost done. Um, so the sandals or the shoes of the Roman soldier often were fitted with nails. And I thought this was really interesting. Or arm or spikes, right? And that made them hold fast into the ground. So a Roman soldier would not go to battle just wearing ordinary shoes. Ordinary shoes with um, that could slip or, um, you know, just like a basketball. I mean, a football player, they usually have like cleats or soccer players. They have cleats, right? It allows them to dig their shoes into the ground, right? Now, because or if he wore shoes that were even if they had the spikes, if they were worn out, you know, he would not or she would not get the firm footing while marching through various types of ground. So we talked about ground that was full of what rocks and pebbles and, and even glass, right? So if it was a dangerous battlefield, that Roman soldier had to make sure his feet were properly fitted, right? That he had the right kind of shoes to traverse in the rocky terrain, right? Or if he did not, he would even slip. You know, when you have your, your shield up and you are going head to head in battle, you know, shields locking, you know that they were pushing each other. If you notice how the soldiers fight, when they locked those shields, they were pushing each other. So the person who had the best footing was the one who won the battle, right? So do you see that, you know, how we as believers, we have to wear the right things on our feet. We have to have the proper fitting. So we have to know what the gospel of peace is. You know, blessed is a person who has, who, whose feet are properly fitted, right? You know the gospel. So you can go into battle because you know the word of God, right? So this, the Roman soldier, as we do, have to have on special shoes so that they could um, win or that they could f position themselves in battle and, and win, and shoes, just as shoes allow us to traverse painful terrain, right? The preparation of the gospel of peace allows us to navigate or negotiate otherwise painful trails and tribulations and trials without fear. Isn't it interesting? I, you know, I had to take a moment there because we have to have the right thing on our feet to navigate this life. Do you see how feet, <laughs> having the right shoes, allows you to navigate this life better, right? If you have feet or shoes that have nails in them, right, you have the gospel of peace. You know the word. You know that you know that you know. When you are going against someone in battle, 
your feet are firmly placed in the ground. And as you lock shields and you're pushing and battle back and forth, you, you are going to win because what? Your feet are properly fitted with the gospel of peace. Does that make sense? So we have to know that we know. We have to wear the right things when we're going into battle. Again, this desert place can get you thrown off because you didn't think you would be here. And then you didn't think you would be here that long. <laughs> you know, sometimes she said, I've had a bad day. Tomorrow is going to be much better. And then tomorrow is kind of the same, <laughs> right? But the blessing is that we, we have new mercies every day. Every day we have new mercies. And although the situation hasn't changed, right? God is still on the throne. And he has, he has allowed us to live through that situation day to day and allow us to have our feet ready even in this bad place, to be able to march forward and present the gospel of peace. Because we have the right shoes on, right? I, these trials will make you slip and slide all over the place. But if your feet are fitted with the gospel of peace, then as you traverse this rocky terrain, as you are in the desert and you are just stepping on all kinds of things, you are still moving forward because you have the right thing on. I think that's, you know, for me, I was ready to just say, that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm good to go. Because if my feet are prepared properly, that there is going to be a victory in that battle. We have to watch what we put on. We really have to watch. So we have to have our, our feet fitted with the gospel of peace. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I think I'm over my time, but I just wanted to read something to you that every soldier, every Christian soldier must have peace, right? Even the prepared gospel of peace under his feet, like the shoes one treads. So we have to make sure, guys, as we are going through this desert experience, that we have the right shoes on, meaning that wherever we go, we have to know that we know the word of God. You know, you can't stand in the street and proclaim the gospel and not know the gospel. You know, somebody is going to come to you and either challenge you or say something, you know, out of sorts. And if you don't know the word, you say, well, maybe you're right. Maybe I was wrong all these years. You know, what church did you go to? I want to, I want to learn your teaching. You ever hear that? You know, somebody comes to you with eloquent, eloquent words or eloquent words. And you say, I, I need to go to that church because they have, they have something going on. And then you go and you hear a gospel that you don't, you know, doesn't fit your spirit. But because everybody's jumping and screaming and having a good time, you say, well, this is where I need to be. I know this is God. We have to know the counterfeit. We talked about that. We have to know the, count, the counterfeit. You know, as soon as it comes over the horizon, the horizon, we have to go the other way. You know, don't be pulled in to what's going on in this world. Don't be pulled in to just things that are going to tickle your ear or entertain you. Have your feet properly fitted with the gospel of peace, right? And again, we're able to firmly tread if our feet is proper, if our shoes are properly fitted and we stand secure and well protected from the spikes and snares of sin, right? And we can, or we can be debilitated if we are not properly guarded, right? So we don't want to collapse in battle. I don't want to get in this desert experience and I'm fighting every day just trying to get this thing through and I collapse in battle. I don't want to do that. I want to go through and win. How about you? You know, so we have to be determined every day. God, help me. Help me to get through this hard time. Help me. Prepare my feet, God. Help me to retain your word. And he says it won't return void, right? It will establish that thing that it's set to do, and then it will prosper. So don't worry that, you know, you, you read the word and study and you meditate and you say, well, I can't, I can't, I can't hold this. He says he will bring it back to you. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't know what you were going to say? <laughs> you know, you wanted to present the gospel to someone and you didn't know what you were going to say. But the Lord gave you the words because it was already in your heart. You have already read the word over and over and over again. So it's in your spirit. God will bring it back. 
he will bring it to remembrance. But he's, how can he bring it to remembrance if it's not in there? So our, our part is to read and to study and to meditate on the word. Meditate is what? Saying it over and over and over until we get it in our spirit. We, that's our part. And when it needs to come up, he will bring it up. It will accomplish that thing that he said it to do and prosper you. Praise the Lord and prosper you. Amen. So are you properly fitted? Do you have the right shoes on <laughs> in the desert? It says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring peace, the gospel of peace. How beautiful. You know, and only God can say that. So if you're walking, again, that Roman soldier shoes would just, it's like a sandal, right? With, um, you know, maybe straps that would, uh, you know, wrap around his leg. But it had spikes in the bottom of it, <laughs> right? So, and then if you're walking in the desert, your feet are probably really dusty and dirty and all of that. But he says, how beautiful are the feet. That's only God. You know, we come to him and our lives are a mess, but he makes something beautiful out of our lives. Who but God could make something beautiful out of a mess that we have made in our lives? God can. And once he cleanses us he, and we ask forgiveness and again we what forsake it, we go the other way. He doesn't remember any of that. He, we're presented to him righteous. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't let Satan get you in that corner and wail on you. And tell you you are nothing and you will never be nothing. And God doesn't love you. And when you go to when you, when you die, you are going to hell because you, you know, you committed a sin. You have to know the word of God. We talked about that. You have to have that belt of truth. You have to know the truth of God in order to traverse this this desert. Because it could be difficult. But praise the name of the Lord. If we have the right shoes on, we can climb. You know, we can go head to head. We can go shield to shield <laughs> because we have the spirit of the Lord in us. And we know Jesus goes before us. So, you know, we are the ones who win. We win. We already win. That's the team I want to be on. I don't have to think that we're going to win. I know if I'm on the Lord's side that I'm going to win. How about you? You know, there are going to be ups and downs, ins and outs. But the end of it, we're going to win. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What do you have on? What do you have on tonight? Again, this is what to wear in the desert part three. <laughs> you know. And again, we talked about what? The belt of truth, knowing that you know that you know. The breastplate of righteousness is covering your vital organs. We talked about that spirit, that spirit or the, the garment of praise for that specific spirit of heaviness. And tonight we talk about having the right shoes on. Have your feet um, shod or ready, you know, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He says, how beautiful are your feet? How beautiful are your feet in the desert <laughs> with all of the sand and the dirt and the glass and all these things that go on in the desert? He said, how beautiful are your feet? You know, God looks at things much differently than we do. He looks at things much differently. And we need to have the heavenly perspective, right? We have to know that we know God's word. And you know what? We have to also treat each other in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. You know, we have to forgive each other, which is sometimes a very difficult thing, depending on the scenario, you know. But if we think about what he forgave us of, it does kind of change our perspective. You know, um, things people have done some really horrible things. You know, um, if you look at yourself, maybe you have done some real horrible things. But God said, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and he's just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But we have to what? We have to ask. We have to confess it. So today, confess it, whatever it is, confess it. And he says what? I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I will I will remove your sin as far as it is it from the east or the west. And we know they never intersect. So today is the day to what? To cleanse, to breathe. You know, you have to take those refreshing breaths in and out. You know, I find I'm holding my body so close, so tight. 
and I have to breathe. I have to breathe and, and let it go and let it go. Spend time with God tonight. I know it's Sunday night and the week is coming. These weekends go by so quickly, <laughs> but spend some time tonight, you know, before you turn in to just confess some things to God. You know, make sure in your mind that you know God's word is true and that you're covering, you know, your vital organs and that 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 root of condemnation has not set in your spirit. And if it is, you confess that thing and you release it and, la and allow God to to dig it out and then he'll close that wound. God will close those wounds as only he can. Let him let him clean you out. Let him take the oil of healing. Let him clean you out and cleanse you and move forward. So we are dancing in the desert. We are in these times. God didn't give us a time limit. You know, again, sometimes I sometimes I pray. I think so fervently in my mind and I think things are going to happen at that moment because in the name of Jesus, I'm, you know, and that's how we feel. Sometimes we feel that heaven has come down. But God didn't say that I'm going to move exactly when you when you're praying. Things are happening, right? That he's already dispatched the angels, but you may not see the manifestation as soon as you pray. So he says, keep knocking, <laughs> keep praying, right? Knocking, that knocking is a continual knocking, right? So he wants us to be present when he answers the prayers. And when he does, what do you think he wants from us? He wants us to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And spend some time. And prayer and praise, not just, okay, thank you. Now I need you to do this next. You know, like we do our parents. Okay, thank you. I need, now I, this is what I need next. You know, how do you think, how do you feel as a parent when you've done something wonderful that your child has wanted and they finally get that thing? And what do they say? Okay, thanks. Okay, I need this now. Or they get this toy, they play with it for five minutes and toss it. And you spend all that money. You spend all that time, you know, trying to get that for your child and they spend spend five minutes with it and toss it. How do you think God feels when he gives us all these good and precious promises and he answers prayers in such a magnificent way and we say, okay, God, thanks. Okay, now this is what I need. How do you think he feels as your father? You know, just kind of think about how you would feel as a mother and father or how you have felt as a, as a parent when your child acted that way. Let's be Good, good kids <laughs> this week. Let's just give glory to our God. You know, let's honor our father. Let's love our neighbor as ourselves. Let's try to do better this week. You know, we've had a week of Thanksgiving and we're just so grateful how we, you know, you spend time in family and you just go around the table and ask and telling, you know, what you're thankful for. Let's allow this Thanksgiving experience to take us through the year. Let's be thankful. There's always something to be grateful for, even in tough, 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 tough times. You know, find something, something that you can thank God for. And as you find something, you'll find that you found something else. And then you found something else. And then all of a sudden, there is what? There is a garment of praise. There is a garment of praise for that spirit. That's that particular spirit of heaviness. And you begin to feel better. Because what? You feel like you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, right? And all these things start happening once you begin to praise God. So find that one thing. Find the one thing that you can thank God for. And then talk about that for a little bit in his presence. And then you'll find that something else will happen, right? And then you'll find that something else will happen. And then by that time, you're on the floor, <laughs> you know, you're just praising God for his goodness. So let's spend some time praising God this week. I just thank you so much for spending time. Again, this is Brenda Divers of HeartMinistryRadio.com. We want you to download, I keep saying, our new app. It's a wonderful, wonderful app. You know, you can keep current on all of the shows and all the music. We're starting our, our Christmas music. And this, I just love this time of year. So we want you to enjoy all of this. We also have HMN TV, right? If you go to the, um, heartministryradio.com and click on HMN TV, then you can also view, you know, the, the various shows. So we, we have TV on demand and audio on demand. I tell you. You know, you can't miss a thing. I know your lives are so busy. So if you don't if you don't have time to see it when it airs, you can always go to heartministryradio.com 
and click on either the show host that you missed or HMN TV, the videos and the TV that you missed. So again, thank you. Thank you. I have enjoyed spending time with you. I appreciate just the, the platform to be able to share God's word, you know, and to just interact with you because I know that God is a great God and that you know that too. Okay, so join us next week on um, The Doors to Your Heart and heartministryradio.com. If you weren't able to see it live, go to heartministryradio.com and HMN TV. Then you can see those things that you've missed. And just sometimes you need to, you know, you like to listen again and again. You can do that. <laughs> you can do that. So have a wonderful week. If you if you have a message, a ministry, if you have music that you'd like to share with the world, contact us or contact me at Brenda at HeartMinistryRadio.com. You can go to the doors to your heart at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 215 847 6664. We'll get right back to you. We are just so grateful for you. And just let us know what, what's on your mind, what you're thinking, how you are dancing in the desert, how you are developing your discipline in the, in the hard times, how you've changed your perspective as it relates to your hard times. Share that with us because we need the world to know that we can all get through this. As tough as it seems, you know, sometimes you feel that you, could, you can never even get over this. Sometimes you feel that I can't even make it through another moment. But then it's the next day. Isn't that something? You know, so and if, if you see me in the desert and I'm in a ball, <laughs> you know, I'm having a tough time of it. Grab me. Grab me up. Help me through that. If I see you, I'm going to do the same. So let's pray for each other. Again, dance. Dance in the desert. If you find somebody in there with you, grab a hand and get to dancing. Let's just develop those relationships that, you know, that we would not have. Meet somebody or talk to someone that you would not have. You know, spread the love of Jesus this week. Again, thank you again for listening to Heart Ministry Radio and the doors to your heart. I'm Brenda Divers. I'll see you again real soon. God bless you.